Hey everybody, it's Jamie from No Getting Off This Train and in today's video, I went to Walmart to see how many meals I can make with $20. This is an extreme grocery budget shopping trip. I've actually been planning this trip for a couple of weeks now and I actually did a live Facebook training on what foods you can buy that are the most nutritious if all you had for the week was $20. I actually uploaded this video to YouTube so I will link that down in the description and up here as well if you want to check it out later. That goes into more detail on why I chose the items on that list, on the breakdown of like the nutritional value and it's just you know my opinion on what I think would be the best for at least my family. Family. And the most exciting thing was I told them like here's the list I'm gonna go to Walmart and buy these exact items and I'm gonna see if this actually works out I'm gonna see how many meals I can make with all this food and see if it'll feed at least me and my family for the week So before I take you into the shopping trip and show you everything I bought I just wanted to give a few disclaimers First of all, this meal plan is not set in stone. Just because these are the items that I would buy for $20 doesn't mean that these are the same items that you need to buy or that you should buy for yourself and for your family. Like for example, I bought flour and yeast. If you choose not to make your own bread, go. you can buy some extra pasta. I mean, that would work for your family too. I also tried to make sure I portioned everything correctly, that we all got this, the right kind of portion sizes for me and my family. You may need to double the amount of food that you eat in that meal or you may need to kind of cut back and that's okay and if you cut back it just means you have more to eat I also planned on this meal plan serving one person and that means that if you break it down $20 over a five-day period that's about two dollars and forty cents per day or 80 cents per meal if you only eat those three meals in a day I'm gonna show you what all the meals look like what I would probably serve it with how I would prepare it just to kind of give you a few ideas now with all that being said, let me take you to Walmart and show you what I got and then all the meals I made out of it. All right, let's get started. I'm not going to go too much detail into exactly why I bought what I bought. You can watch the vi other video for that. But the first thing I grabbed were those chicken leg quarters. You can get a 10 pound bag of that for like $4.38. So I figured that'd be the best use of my money. I put that in my cart. And then I bought some sour cream just for a little bit of extra fat. You can take that out if you need it, but I decided that we might need use it in most of our recipes. I also bought some yogurt. Now I really prefer Greek yogurt, but the regular yogurt is so much cheaper at $1.84 as opposed to $3.50. So I bought a big 32 ounce container of vanilla yogurt that's gonna go with our breakfast. Then I also bought just one dozen eggs. One dozen here in Ohio is 128, and I plan on using this in two different meals. Going over to the breakfast section, I did buy a box of pancake mix because you can get like 16 servings, I believe, out of the one box. That'll be plenty for breakfast. Then I, I decided to buy flour and yeast. You might decide differently, but I wanted to make some bread and tortillas. So I bought a five pound bag of all purpose flour and then I bought a package of yeast. It comes in a three pack. I decided to buy the rapid yeast instead of the active dry. Then I bought a can of tomatoes, thinking that it would go pretty good in the soup that I had planned to make, and just for a little bit of variety. Then I went over to the beans and the rice. Now a one pound bag of brown rice is 78 cents, whereas a two pound bag is $1.37. So it's a little bit better value to buy the two pound bag. So I grabbed one of those. Then I saw that pinto beans were pretty cheap, at least cheaper than black beans actually. So a one pound bag was a dollar and a two pound bag was 148. So I knew I could cook these pretty in easily in the instant pot, so I grabbed one of those. Then as far as fruit goes, bananas are usually really cheap. I tried to grab some of the smaller ones that had more in the bunch, hoping to stay <laughs> under budget. Then carrots. Carrots are a really good one that are high in nutrients and low in price. A one pound bag was 92 cents. So I got one of those to use in a couple of recipes. Then cabbage was where I kind of messed up. I didn't weigh any of my produce. So I grabbed like apparently the biggest one ever. So 
Here's my cart. I grabbed an onion too, which I didn't show, but this is everything that I plan on using for the 20-ish dollars. I actually spent 2201 because I didn't weigh my produce. Um, I have those four pounds of cabbage and I was only hoping to buy like two pounds. So definitely weigh your produce so you can get closer to the $20, but still $22 is not bad. I'll be able to use all of this in the meals that I planned and then some. So let me show you how I started. First of all, I did my beans in two different batches, one pound at a time. I heard it's easier that way in your Instant Pot, but I took a pound of beans and looked through it, rinsed it, put it in my Instant Pot. You can cook them unsoaked in the Instant Pot. So I put in the one pound and then six cups of water. I didn't add any seasonings or anything because I was going to do that when I made the meals. So I put the lid on and I cooked it for 30 minutes of regular pressure. I actually added some salt and pepper actually. Okay, so 30 minutes in the Instant Pot and uh, I think it was like a 15 minute natural release and then it was pretty much done. While the beans were cooking, I made the entire box of pancake mix. Like I said, it's like 15 or 16 servings for the entire package. So I just made the entire thing, hoping to get it all done in one batch. That way we could just go into the fridge and grab what we need. So it was like six cups of water or something like that. And if you had any extra stuff you wanted to add to it, any chocolate chips, any blueberries you had in your freezer or something, those would go good in it too. But it took me probably 20 to 25 minutes to make all the pancakes. I believe that after I was done, I had like 46 or 48 all together. So a serving size is about three, which makes it perfect for breakfast. And then in between the pancakes cooking, I peeled the carrots. And what I did was I kept the peels and the ends of the carrots and stuck them in a big bag because I was going to make broth with that plus the chicken bones. So here are all the pancakes that made seriously like 46. So I put them in um, big containers and stuck those in the fridge after they cooled off. Then I decided to shred my carrots because you can make the vegetables go further by shredding them. It kind of bulks out the meal a lot. So that's how much it made from one pound of carrots. I was actually really surprised. Now the beans were done at this point. I had to release the pressure. And after a couple minutes, after opening it, I decided to take this batch and turn it into refried beans. I made one before, just regular beans. So I mashed them all up using my potato masher. I also added some of the Flavor God Taco Tuesday seasoning. So after a few minutes, it's very liquidous, but it actually thickened up a whole lot after I was done. Now going into um, getting ready for dinner, I started a batch of rice. So put um, like two cups of brown rice in there with some more Taco Tuesday seasoning and let that go for a little bit. Now, as far as the chicken goes, I baked them all at once. There were what, like 10? Yeah, there were 10 big um, leg quarters in there. So I sprinkle them with salt and pepper and a little bit of Flavor God Everything seasoning. And I baked these at 350 or 375, I think, for like 45 minutes. And then I had to use a thermometer at the end to make sure that it was 165. So while all that was going, I chopped up the onion. I used a little bit here and there. I tried to make that stretch as far as I could in all of my other recipes. So I added a couple of them to the pan and let that cook for a little bit along with two cups of the cooked black or pinto beans and more Taco Tuesday seasoning. I'm making burrito bowls out of this one. So after cooking it for a few minutes, um, the chicken was basically done at this point. So they, they smelled so good. And you know, honestly, I was not looking forward to shredding all of it. So I did a little bit right here. I'd used about three ounces of chicken and then the rice, pinto beans, and some sour cream. So very simple. I was actually gonna add some shredded cabbage and carrots to it, but I totally forgot. But this is our first meal, was just a simple burrito bowl. And so after dinner, I decided to shred 
all the chicken. This is probably not the most effective way to do it. I was using forks and my fingers, so I probably didn't get all the meat out. But okay, listen, 10 pounds, a 10 pound bag of that chicken made about two pounds, 11 ounces. And I was kind of surprised actually at how little meat we got out of it. But like I said, I wasn't very efficient in pulling off the meat, but I took all the bones and put them in those freezer bags there. And I was going to use that to make broth the next day for some soup. Going into breakfast, so here is what one serving of pancakes would look like, and then here's what two servings would look like. Use your uh, your best judgment when it comes to like calories, nutrition. I mean, two servings would be good too. So I took like a fourth cup of the yogurt, and I put that on top of the pancakes as well as some sliced bananas. And it actually made a really good breakfast. Now I'm getting ready to make the broth for the soup. I started out by using both bags of the chicken bones, but it ended up being way too much. So I stuck the other bag in the freezer. Then I added about eight cups of water, salt, pepper, a bunch of other seasonings like basil, oregano. And while I did not buy those on my Walmart trip, you don't have to use the seasonings, but you can use whatever you have at home. And I cooked this on high in the, on the slow cooker function for about five hours. And right after that, I started on the bread. Now I absolutely love homemade bread. It's really simple to make. It is just kind of time consuming. I usually use my bread machine, but I decided to just do it by hand today. And I've got the recipe down below if you guys wanna try making this as well. But this recipe, super simple, just adding the flour and most of the dry ingredients in there, mixing it all together, and then adding in the water and sugar mixture and just mixing all that together to form the dough. The problem with uh, making your own bread is that it is time consuming, like I said. You have to let it uh, rise for an hour and then you have to shape it and then let it rise for another two hours or so. So you're basically like at home all day waiting for this bread, but it is definitely worth it. And this bread will go really well with the soup that I'm gonna make. So I oiled a little, the bowl a little bit to set the dough in. Ended up using way too much oil, so I kind of had to pat it down with a paper towel. But I let that rise for about an hour. And after that, you can see it rose quite a bit. And then I put it on the same um, sh uh, pan, whatever you call that, yes. And I uh, formed it, put it in the pan, and put the towel on it and let it sit for another two hours. Finally, it's really looking like bread now. I sliced the top of it and baked it for about 45 minutes. And my house smelled amazing. And at this time, you could actually probably brush it on top with some butter or something. I let it cool for a little while and then sliced it into 12 slices. Once it was done, I just stuck it in a, a bag and put it on the counter. Look at that, amazing looking bread. It was so good with my dinner. Now the broth was done. I did my best trying to drain all of the, the stuff into a bowl first and then transferring it back in to the, the instant pot right there, just that little, that bowl there. But it turned out pretty good. I ended up needing to add a bunch more salt to it. It was not very flavorful without it but I think I added more like when I made the soup. So getting into the soup, I used about 12 ounces of the chicken, a little bit more of the onions, and two cups of pinto beans, um, the can of diced tomatoes, and then I also added all the broth. It made, I think it was about eight cups or so. I added a few more spices, seasonings, like more basil, oregano, garlic powder, I think I added some salt and pepper too. Now this cabbage, oh my gosh, it was so huge. I ended up using about a quarter of it, I think. Uh, I shredded it up a little bit. And while the soup got to boiling, I added in the cabbage as well as one cup of carrots and just added it right toward the end. That way it wouldn't get too mushy. 
but that really added a lot of bulk to the soup and a lot of extra nutrients. So this made a ton of soup. It was like seriously about three cups worth. It made a huge bowl. We had made it serve four. And then we had some bread along with some butter that I had already in the fridge. It was so good. Next up, I am trying my hand at homemade tortillas. I've made tortillas before, but it didn't turn out all that well. So I'm going to attempt it again. Last time I used whole wheat flour. So maybe that was my problem. But this dough is pretty similar to the bread dough where you have to mix everything together, form the dough, and then let it sit for like 30 minutes just to rest. But then after that, it was ready to be cooked. Like I've got the recipe down below as well. So after that, I just cut it into eight pieces and rolled each one into a ball. And then I took my, my roller and rolled them out as flat as possible. Now the thing you have to remember about tortillas is that you have to roll them out like paper thin. And that was really hard for me to do. It kept sticking to the rolling pin. I kept, I don't know, messing up. And I had my pan um, put to a higher temperature. So it was like I put it on the pan and it took maybe like 20 seconds on each side. Well, while that was cooking, I was trying to roll out the other one. So the pan was sitting there getting really hot with nothing in it while I was trying to roll the other one. But like 20 seconds each side and they were done. So it's time consuming. Yes, I don't think I would make these every time but they did actually turn out pretty good. I actually had to open up my windows and turn on the vent because like smoke was starting to fill up the kitchen. But yeah, this is what the tortillas look like. They're really soft, not perfectly round, but they were really good. So I made these because I was going to make some refried bean burritos with some of those beans. And then one of you suggested that I make a like a coleslaw with some of the cabbage and carrots and the sour cream. It was a genius idea, by the way. I added onion powder, garlic powder, some salt and pepper, mixed it all together, and holy cow, that was really good. It was like a cup of cabbage and about a half cup of carrots. So I also made some rice earlier in the day and I put a little bit of my mixture in the tortilla. I only used one tortilla for my lunch, but you could always use two if it fits within your calories or whatever. But yeah, that tortilla, after you warm it up in the microwave too, really, really good. And then that, that coleslaw right there, I would totally make it again, even while not on this challenge. It was awesome. All right, so now we are making a stir fry. I made that rice the other day before, so poured the rest of the rice and the rest of the onions in the pan along with another 12 ounces of chicken. Added some salt and pepper and let that cook and heat up for a few minutes. I also added some curry powder because I figured curry powder would make it taste really good. Then I added about four cups of cabbage and about a cup of carrots and basically you're just heating up the stir fry. I also used four of the eggs to scramble up and I added those to the pan at the very end. And that, that helps to add a bunch of extra protein to it as well. This ended up making a ton of food. I, all these recipes I made serve four. So if that's too much food for you, you can always um, put them or divide it into more servings so you can feed more out of it. But for us, I mean, serving four is just fine. So I made about two cups of the mixture and it was actually really good. We needed to add a little bit more salt at the end, but we really enjoyed this one. Then the next meal I am making is uh, egg burritos. 
So using up more of the eggs, I made this for breakfast, but you could also use it for lunch. You can use whatever is left over, whether it's extra beans, extra rice, extra chicken. Um, you can add all of that to your scrambled eggs. So I just used um, the eggs with some beans, salt and pepper, put it in one tortilla. Um, there is too much mix for the tortilla. So like I said, you can use two if you want but it, ro it rolled up really easily. That's the perfect way to use up the leftover stuff is to just turn it all into a burrito. It was really good. So that is all I have for you. Those were all the meals that I was able to make from my $20 challenge. To be honest with you, I think I did pretty good with that $20 and I still had some food left over. I have like maybe less than half a bag of the rice left. I still have a small container of beans left in the fridge, a little bit of sour cream, maybe a little bit of cabbage, but so you can take that food and make a couple more meals out of it. So I hope this was kind of helpful for you to give you like a couple of ideas on what you can make with only $20. Like you saw, there wasn't a huge amount of variety, but when you only have a certain amount of money and you can only buy a certain amount of items, I mean, a lot of the meals are going to look the same. You just kind of have to get creative with it, which is what I tried to do. And I think it worked. Leave me a comment too and tell me what would you buy if you only had $20? Would you buy some of the stuff that I had? Would you buy something totally different? Let me know because I want to do more of these challenges to see if I can buy different kinds of items and what other meals I can make from them. So I'm looking for more ideas too. And if you have not subscribed to this YouTube channel yet, go ahead and do so because like I said, I'm going to have more of these videos coming out in the next few months. And then if you ring that bell down there, you will be notified when those videos come out as well as my other grocery hauls, recipes, and meal planning tips. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you later.